You're listening to Daybreak on CBC Radio 1. I'm Chris Walker in Kelowna. A national Jewish organization is responding to an interview you heard on this program last week. You may remember we spoke with David Wilkes, the mayor of Sparwood and a director on the, lo- on the local regional district board. He was one of four directors to vote against renaming Mount Petain. That mountain is named after Philippe Petain, the ruler of Vichy, France, who collaborated with the Nazis during the Second World War. Under his rule, an estimated 76,000 Jews were deported to Nazi concentration camps. Of those, 73,000 died. Here's part of our conversation with David Wilkes. One would argue that um, because none of us were there, that uh, Petain may have been looking out for the interests of France. People make grave errors in their, in their lives. Patan was one of them. Um, but it doesn't mean that we er- erase the history. So what then disqualifies someone from being honored with a geographical name, if not being a Nazi collaborator? That's a good question, Chris. I don't know. Um, you know, uh, some would say that, uh, you know, he was looking out for the best interests of France. Now, that conversation caught the attention of the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. It's a national, nonpartisan, nonprofit organization dedicated to protecting Jewish life in Canada. It's affiliated with the Jewish Federation of Greater Vancouver, and Ezra Shankin is the CEO, and he's on the line with us from Vancouver. Mr. Shankin, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I believe you heard that interview in its entirety. Mm-hmm. What, what were your initial thoughts? Well, I mean, my initial thought is, well, that's not helpful. Uh, you know, we're, we're organizations and communities that have worked uh, tirelessly uh, to try to educate around uh, the Holocaust and, and the impacts of the Holocaust. Uh, you know, we, we have been over, over the last at least number of months uh, working on trying to educate people about the misuse of symbols like swastikas. Um, and when you hear a leader like this come out and uh, create some sort of argument that that there was a justification for collaboration in in one of the worst genocides ever perpetrated. Um, that that's not helpful for the work that we're doing day in and day out. But you know, it's shocking. I mean, the whole thing is just shocking. You heard Mr. Wilkes here in that clip uh, say that he, he feels that Patan may have been acting in the French national interest. He repeated that three or four times during the interview. Could you explain what effect Philippe Pétain had on Jewish life in France during the Second World War? Well, I think you said it at the, at the beginning of, of your, in your intro. I mean, 73,000 Jews died because of the government that, that this person led uh, during the, the rule in Vichy, France. Um, so I, I think there's, there's a very, very clear line connection to, you know, that leadership and those deaths. Uh, you know, so that's just one thing. Let's not let's not talk about all the restrictive laws that were put in place, not just for Jews, for other people. And, you know, if we want to think about it from a Canadian dimension, um, you know, countless Canadian lives were lost in defeating the Nazis, for which, you know, the Nazis that, that, that this man uh, aligned himself with and fought alongside uh, during during the war. So so all of those lives that had to be lost you know, defeating the Nazi scourge were, were also, is, you know, it's a stain on their memory also when, when, you, uh, when, you have, uh, when you're honoring people like this. You know, one of the aspects of that interview that our listeners remarked on was the kind of casual way in which Mr. Wilkes just minimized the anti-Semitism at the, at the very root of this man's legacy, that, that kind of, well, there are two sides to this story, that, that kind of normalization of this. How much does that concern you? I think it's incredibly concerning because I, I ask myself, who is he representing? Are there people who are calling him up that really need some significant education here around around the the issue? I, I mean, I I think that our our elected leaders are elected to represent uh, us, and I I think to me it felt like, wow, we must have our work cut out for us, you know, because there's clearly a population he's speaking for. Uh, that that really doesn't understand that there is absolutely no justification for war crimes. Um, we know this. It's it's very very clear. Uh, it's not 
well, it's okay, you did war crimes, but you did it for this reason. People who do war crimes are prosecuted. People who do war crimes are executed. People who do war crimes are imprisoned. This person was, in fact, prosecuted and put in prison by his own government. So it's not us saying it, which we would say, but France itself said that his behavior was beyond the pale that it does wipe away all of the things that he did before. And it, they did, one, sentence him to death, two, you know, commute that and put him in life in prison. So they've made the decision for us. They've already told us that there is no, there's no gray area here uh, on this. And Mr. Wilkes attempted to, and others do too, attempted to situate this case within a larger debate about historical names and, and colonial names and indigenous names and so on and so forth. I'm curious to what extent, in your view, this case stands apart from others and why. Yeah, I, I think that that is actually a, a really a really challenging thing for, for us uh, in the work that we're doing day in and day out. Um, you know, I... I understand the debate that's going on around all different namings and should this be removed or should that be removed. Now, the problem with that is that we're this is a this is a no-brainer, right? In in a sense, you know, removing this is is you know should be done. It it absolutely should have been done a long time ago. Um, this has nothing to do with the politics of the day. This has to do with with making corrections in, in the way that they should be made through a process. Um, and I'm sorry that this has been caught up in some ways in a general debate around removal of monuments or any, anything like that. But the removal of a monument or a naming for somebody who collaborated with the Nazis, who, uh, whose government was responsible for the extermination of 73,000 Jews, um, I think that that's a no-brainer. The um, Canadian, the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs tweeted that it planned to discuss this directly with Mr. Wilkes. There are three other politicians who also voted as he did. When we called them, all three defended their votes. A few also defended Patan's legacy. If they're listening, what would you ask them to do? I mean, the first thing that we're asking, and we, we have reached out, um, you know, to, to the players— uh, in this, and you know, we're, we're asking one for an apology. Two, we're asking for an opening of dialogue. Uh, we need to talk. We're here. We're here to talk to you. We want to understand where you're coming from, but we also think it's very important that we're educating you about the truth around this this situation. Um, we have a lot of people who spend a lot of time studying this subject. And we want to make ourselves available to those leaders. Uh, frankly, I wish that they had called us before and said, you know. I'm not sure how I want to vote on this. Can you help me understand the impact? We're there for that, and we would absolutely be happy to be engaged in that conversation. But at this point, I think there's a lot of hurt people in the Jewish community when they, when they see situations like this, and I think there's a lot of hurt people in the general community too. Um, I think they deserve, uh, they deserve an apology, and, and uh, I hope that they, they'll uh, you know, come out and, and – and, Say they understand that there there was clearly an error here. What they were trying to accomplish is is not should not have been accomplished through these means. Mr. Shankin, it's been really good to to talk to you this morning about it. Thanks very much for joining us. No, it's uh, my privilege. Take care. Bye bye. That's Ezra Shankin, the CEO of the Jewish Federation of Greater Vancouver. It's affiliated with the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. Now we provided an opportunity before this interview for the other three directors to clarify or explain their vote. Uh, the mayor of Elkford, Dean McCarricker, wrote back, not interested. Uh, Stan Doyle and Mike Sosnowski did not respond. That vote, by the way, did pass the regional district, so Mount Patan is one step closer to being renamed. We'll keep you posted.